Hi friends, and welcome back to The Rock. It's Mr. Chris, and I'm so glad that you came back to join us again this week. We have had so much fun this month celebrating the truth of what Jesus did, what Jesus came and did for us, and the most important part, that Jesus is alive. What Jesus did really did turn the world upside down. And guess what? I've got a pretty upside down game that we get to play this week. All right, so does anybody know what these are? They're peeps, and they're pretty controversial around here. Either you love them or not so much. Yeah, they're pretty hit or miss. But we want to play a game with them. Have you ever noticed, though, if you do like them, when you rip them apart, how sticky they are? And I'm not just talking about kind of sticky. Like, actually really sticky. So, for today's game, we have two helpers that are going to play our game. It's our married couple, Pastor Sam and Miss Anna. They're going to take the peeps, and one of them is going to be blindfolded. While that person is blindfolded, they're going to take the peep and try to stick it to their partner's face. They have one minute to stick as many peeps as they can to their face. After that minute, they're going to switch. Whoever has the most after two rounds is the winner. Let's watch. On your mark, get set, go. Um, higher. No, no, you have to rip it in half. You're doing it wrong. There you go. Okay. I feel like I'm crushing this No, you gotta go slower. You've already lost them all. You've already lost them all. That, that's your face though, right? Yeah, you're, just, you're not doing pretty good. Maybe try a different color. Oh, my hair, I just washed it. Don't use your cheap kids, don't practice. Okay, maybe okay. maybe try a strategy that you can get to tear it half. Stick. More intentionally. Stick. Okay, we're gonna lick it. I feel like it's gonna help. Did it help? Yeah, it helped. Also don't lick things and stick them into other people's faces, kids. I don't know if the licking can help me. I think it's hurt. I think it's hurt. I don't like tea. I don't like tea. <laughs> Does this crap? Let's put them on my mouth. I feel like I'm crushing. All right, and time. I did not do well. I did not do well at all. That one's deep. I have one on. Oh, that's gonna. That's not gonna feel good. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Let's try it again. I feel like I have lipstick on from all the sugar. Your, why did your hair come out so easy? <laughs> I didn't think these could get more disgusting to me. Okay, three, two, one, go. All right, right, I'm right in front. Of you. Pretty good. Okay, those are all right. Check that one time, but go, go. Okay. A little, a little higher. A little higher. Yeah, oh, that's right in my eye. Right in my eye. Okay. Yeah, get it on the forehead. Make sure it really smashes it. Okay. Yeah, I think you've got a few. Faster. Oh, oh they're, falling. they're falling. Go for my leg technique. Oh, 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 yeah. Man, they taste worse than I remember. Like, maybe timing, like I'll just push and pull. Yeah, you just keep finding right in the eyeball. Oh, that's my nose. That's good. That's good. All right, and time. Why did I agree to this? <laughs> How did we do? Wasn't that really funny? They got extremely messy and it was just a lot of fun to watch. 
All right, guys, let's turn our attention to God and let's stand up and worship Him. Sorry. Oh. Hello, everybody. My name's Jacob, but my friends call me Jake. I don't know how all these balloons got here. It must just be a, another hilarious April Fool's Month joke from my friends. <laughs> and it's a good one. But I can't find anything. I mean, it took me forever just to find this camera. Hello? Camera? Where are you? I need to talk about humility. Camera? Camera? Hello, where are you? I need to talk about humility. So, let's talk about humility. Humility is putting others first by giving up what you think you deserve. Now, what's a good way to describe humility? Okay, so let's say I was a world famous balloon maker. I could be all like, I make balloons better than anybody. I deserve the best seat in the house at the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the balloon convention. I deserve the best seat in the house at the balloon convention. Meh. What if I won a contest for best color box puzzle solving? I could be all like, 
I can cube solve faster than you. I'm smart and you're not. <laughs> or I could be like, hey, if you want to know more about cube solving, I can teach you because I'm smart and also nice. Lamps or electricity. You know everything there is to know about electricity. You're like Alfred Einstein. This lamp works because of power going through the wire into the light bulb and it makes it bright and stuff and I can control it with a switchy poo. I know everything there is to know about electricity and light and things like that. <laughs> Sorry about that. That was really weird. I don't really know anything about electricity. Anyway, today's story is about these people who thought they knew everything about what God was up to, but they really had a lot more to discover. I've got a lot more to discover too. Like, where's my bed? And my TV? And my floor? The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story. Inspired by the book of Luke, Chapter 24, verses 13 through 35. The sun was still high in the sky as Cleopas and his friend, who we'll call Micah, started their journey to the town of Emmaus. The day was hot and their sandals kicked up dust off the hard packed road. They were exhausted by the difficult events of the past few days. Seven miles, we'll make it by dinner time. You believe it? All that stuff the women said when they came back from the garden. I don't really feel like talking. What if it's true? Have you ever seen a dead man come back to life? Lazarus? You didn't see that. You heard about well, it. Well, lots of people saw it. <sighs> don't look, but fast walker behind us. Uh, just get over. He'll pass. He's slowing down. You know him? I'm not looking. That makes it weird. Nope. Don't know him. Great. Now he knows we're talking about him. Way to make it awkward. Hi. Hi. The man had caught up and now matched his pace to theirs. So what are you talking about as you walk along? Cleopas and Micah exchanged a surprise glance. Cleopas slowed to a stop. Are you the only person visiting Jerusalem who doesn't know? Don't you know about the things that have happened there in the last few days? What things? The man began to walk again, as if he expected Cleopas and Micah to join him. What do we do? Go with it. <clears throat> the things about Jesus of Nazareth, he was a prophet. He was powerful in what he said and did. But the chief priests and our rulers handed Jesus over to be sentenced to death. And they nailed him to a cross. Yeah. We'd hoped he was the one who was going to set Israel free. This all happened three days ago. But early this morning, something crazy happened. Uh, some of the women who followed him went to the tomb, but... They didn't find his body. They saw angels who said Jesus was alive. And then some of our friends went to the tomb. They saw it empty, too. Cleopas and Micah glanced over at the stranger to see how he would take the story. How foolish you are. Excuse me? How long it takes you to believe all that the prophets said. Didn't the Messiah have to suffer these things and then receive his glory? Uh, what? Cleopas and Micah were floored. The stranger had started out by asking them questions. Now it appeared he was schooling them. The whole story is laid out already in scripture and everything written by Moses and the prophets. The stranger reminded them of scriptures they had heard since they were children. Words written thousands of years before showed how Jesus would be born, how he would suffer, and how he would die. So you see, things were supposed to happen this way. This is incredible. You're saying that God has been planning this day for thousands of years? Yeah, but if that's true, then you're saying Jesus is alive? As the stranger smiled at them, Cleopas and Micah realized they had reached Emmaus. Oh, uh, this is us. The stranger nodded and kept walking. Wait, stay with us. It's, it's nearly evening. The stranger joined them at the place they were staying and sat down to dinner with them. This looks like a really fresh loaf of rye. You want to bless the food? 
the man took the bread and looked up to heaven. Thank you, Father. Then he broke the bread, giving each of them a piece. It was then that God had opened their eyes. Cleopas and Micah saw clearly who this man was. Jesus? It's you! As soon as the men recognized him, Jesus disappeared from sight. That was real, right? Jesus broke this bread. He gave it to us. I think deep down I knew it. He explains to us what the scriptures meant. Weren't we excited as he talked with us on the road? We have to tell everyone. Right now. The men were far too excited to wait until the morning. Now, even though it was dark now, they raced the entire way back to Jerusalem. When they reached the place where the disciples were staying, the men could barely contain themselves. What's going on? Are you okay? We have seen Jesus. He's alive. Jesus' friends gathered around as Cleopas and Micah shared the whole story. They were amazed to discover how much bigger God's story was than they expected. Okay, so it doesn't matter how important you are or how talented you are or how much you think you know things. Things will still happen to you that you don't see coming, like I didn't see a room full of balloons coming today. Being humble means admitting there are things you can't do and things you don't know. I am really good at that. That wasn't very humble. Those guys on the road with Jesus thought they knew everything God had planned. That's why when Jesus died, they were like, no way. But Jesus showed them God knew what he was doing all along. For like thousands of years, God left clues that he was sending someone to save the world someone from Abraham's family, a king, like King David, and he would come to earth as a baby, like that prophet guy Isaiah said. There were even clues that a savior would die and come back to life. All that came true with Jesus. So when you expect things to go a certain way, even if you like 100% know things are gonna go that way, they may not. And that's okay, because nobody knows the future, except for God. Hey, maybe we can look into the Bible for clues to what God's plan is for us. Let me see if I can find my Bible. Ah! Oh. No, that's not it. Okay, but there's one verse I remember. It's kind of a clue. This guy Paul wrote, We know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him. I think that means even things that seem bad will turn out good in the end. Pretty cool, huh? So, I don't need to know everything that's gonna happen. Because God's in control. Here's one thing to remember today. There's always more to discover about God's plan. We're never going to know everything. That's why we've got to keep searching. I'm going to look for my Bible one more time. I want to see if there's any more clues. Not what I expected, but I think it'll do the job. You might want to close your ears for this and your eyes just to be safe. <laughs> Don't worry, Floor. I'll find you. Whoa. at number one this time don't want to be in a world where it's all about me i'll take second to whoever is around me i'm giving up my number one position so we all belong at number one together laying down myself Shine the light on someone else I'm giving 
So I put aside myself Make it less of me, get more of someone else Don't wanna be in a world where it's all about me I'll take second to whoever is around me I'm giving up my number one position so we all belong at number one together Laying down myself, trying to light on someone Hey guys, what an amazing story. Could you imagine being those two guys and all of a sudden realizing that it was Jesus next to you the whole time? And then having vanished right before your eyes. That would have really shook me up. So humility is not knowing everything all the time. And that's okay. But sometimes it's really hard to admit when you don't. But the great thing is that we have so many people to learn from and most importantly, we can learn from God. And never, never stop learning. That's right, and I absolutely love that. Coming up this week, I don't want you guys to forget about our community spotlights that happen every Tuesday and Thursday. And also, WC Kids Wednesday night is still happening every Wednesday at 5.30 p.m. You're not gonna wanna miss it. Also, if you would like to give to our church, there'll be a link in the comments below. We love you guys, and we sure do miss you. If you guys ever have any questions or any prayer requests, please feel free to reach out to us. We're always here for you. So the bottom line is, is that we always want to be learning from God. So how does that apply to you? That means to daily make the wise choice and follow what God is teaching. We love you guys, and we'll see you next time. Bye.